Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel and this is going to be part number three of building your own paint boot or spray boot. And we're going to install a couple of things in this part. Uh, there's one more part after number three, which is the final one, which is going to be part number four. But in part number three, we're going to install the doors. We're going to install the insulation. We'll seal off the cabin. We'll also install the heating system and we'll install the lights. And then at the end, we'll seal up the floor so it's going to be uh, waterproof. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's have a quick look on the materials we're going to use and then um, we'll start with the doors. In this video, we're going to install insulation material onto the walls of the spray boot. Uh, this is a polystyrene kind of insulation material and it's kind of enforced on the outside. We're also going to install a heating system and that's going to be based on these infrared panels. You know, they are very thin and we can actually mount them very easily on the wall with these supports. Uh, we've got four of them, so that should be more than adequate. We will also will use um, lights and I will talk a bit more about lights because lights are very important in a spray boot, but not right now. I've got five lights that we will install uh, and then uh, we also have the doors. I guess the doors are probably the most important part and the stuff you see laying here are hinges and handles, all kind of stuff uh, that we're going to use uh, to actually create the doors. All right, so this is going to be the door opening uh, of the spray boot. I've got, I will have one door on the left, which is going to be a fixed panel. Where I'm standing is going to be the second fixed panel, which of course is removable. And the last one will be a swinging door, a door that can open up with hinges on that side. I received a lot of good comments from all of you on how to build the door. There were people saying build it with steel frames and you were absolutely right. Uh, people saying you have to build it with uh, larger panels, um, you know, with enforcement. Uh, even some people said I could use a roller for that. I mean, all good tips. But me being me, I'm a bit awkward, guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it different. I'm going to build the doors uh, with prefab doors. And this is a prefab door. They are very rigid, but they are not very strong in the sense you can knock through it if you knock hard enough, but they don't deform. They are also very light, so that makes it easy for the hinges. And they are very cheap. So I've got three doors like this. I will use two doors as fixed panels that I can remove uh, with those handles. And this is the hand. So I'm going to put the handles on, put the door in place, and I can then move it in and out. Now to hold that panel or the door in place, I'm going to use some dead bolts and I'm going to place four of them. Uh, two on the top, two on the bottom. And if necessary, I can add one on the sides if that would be necessary. I don't think it's going to be necessary, but then again, you never know. Um, and then I'm going to have the third door which is going to be mounted on hinges and that's the door that I will use to get in and out of the spray boot. And this is what we're going to do. So that's an easy way of doing it, very cheap as well and not too complex to build. I think uh, I looked at the uh, metal frame construction as some of you uh, referred to, uh, but the cost of the metal was by far exceeding those very cheap doors. And you can get those doors in any building store. Uh, those are so common where I live, so and they're running around 15 to 20 euros, so that's uh, very cheap. So uh, let's have a closer look on the doors and we start going. Now, of course, the doors will have to be sealed off, and I'm going to have at the inside a ridge all around it with a rubber seal on it, so the door will actually come against it. Uh, the two panels here, well, I'm going to have the deadbolts in and that will press it in place and the second one as well and then I have in between the second fixed panel and this swinging door I'm going to have a closing system and then between the door that opens up uh, the swinging door the door on hinges I will have here as well a rubber seal and a wooden overlap on both sides so that air uh, can't get in that easily so this is what we're going to do so the first thing I'm going to start with is actually closing up the frame and then I'm going to start to prepare the doors uh, to get them installed. So we closed up the sides uh, of the entrance, uh, left and right. And um, now I'm going to put up an airlock. 
here I'm having a straight piece of wood uh, from the right to the left on the floor, and that's going to be the rim where the door will come against. Now, in, air, in order to make it airtight, or as much as I can, of course, I'm going to use this rubber, and it's self-adhesive, and I'm just going to stick it on there, so then the door will come against it, and it will lock it. The distance from the edge is about the, the thickness of the door plus uh, half of this uh, rubbery foam here. So all I need to do now is just tack it in place and then we can do the sides the same way and then we can start installing the doors. Now I'm going to tack this in quite well. This is the first door and this is going to be the first fixed panel. We are going to put handles on either side and then I'm going to have these dead bolts on the top and on the bottom and actually I'm going to have four. I'm using some extra pieces of wood to enforce it and also to lift the handle a bit. That looks good and now we will put the handle up. All right, so that's the first handle. Now we do the second one, and then I'm going to do the dead bolts. So I flipped the door over and this is the first panel and the second door will come against it. So I need something um, for the second door to lean against and that's why I have this piece of wood here uh, that I will actually screw down on this side and I already marked the distance and that way um, the second door will come against this edge here. And I can put a piece of rubber at the inside and I will have another tight um, air seal. And now our first door is ready and we can actually try to install it. So guys, this is it. I've mounted two fixed panels and then this one is a door with the hinges that allows me access into the boot like so. I still have a little bit of work to do on the edges, but that's about it. Now, that's good enough for me to get in and out of the paint boot. I don't need more than that. Um, however, uh, if I have to take something into it, then I will remove these panels. And I have these dead bolts, which I just need to remove. I'm a bit short, but... Uh, and that panel just comes out like that you know this is pretty easy stuff so I'm gonna just put it on the side gotta watch out with my microphone cable because my wireless one is broken so there we go and if I need to put in even a bigger piece well then I just remove the other panel Very simple. Now I'm going to show you something. I've made edges uh, on these doors, so they kind of overlap, so that will actually hold back a lot of dust as well, and I will still put a very small rubber seal here. So here we go. Very simple, isn't it? So now I have a wide opening, uh, which I can drive in almost the car. I think the Lotus Elise will actually fit inside. So let me put it all back. There we go. It's all done. So the next step I am going to do is to close up all the seals in between those OSB boards. So I have boards that are joined together like this. It's teeth and groove, but still there's a small groove in between. So I want to tape that up. And therefore I'm going to use some 
uh, strong tape to put that together. Now, wherever the boards are joined together in a corner, like in the corners, on the top, and on the floor, uh, like over here, I'm going to use some silicon-based elastic kit to seal that corner up. Once I'm done with that, I will then put the insulation on. So I'm done with taping up all the joints on the ceiling, on the sides, and I also placed the elastic seals all around the corners on the spray boot. So now we are ready to install the insulation. So the insulation is kind of styrofoam, it's 25 millimeters thick and it's enforced. It has kind of a wafer on the outside so it's stronger than normal insulation. And I'm going to need this because I'm going to install it at the inside of the boot. That will cover up the OSB panels so that's a lot better because otherwise I would have to paint the OSB panels and I don't really like painting all these panels so that's why I'm going to use insulation at the inside. Later on, in the outside, uh, inside the frame actually, on the outside, I can still install rock wool or any kind of other insulation material to make it even more insulated. So, the way I'm going to bring this onto the wall is by just gluing it onto the wall and I'm using Tech 7, uh, kind of an adhesive and it's called Axtac. It's very strong stuff by the way it is, but I'm not making a commercial for Tech 7 at all. But it is a good product and I'm sure there's many other products that are as good or maybe even better that you can use. I just need to put a few droplets on, on the panel and then you just push it against the wall and it will stay in place. So let me start doing this because that's going to take me probably about an hour and a half to two hours and then after that we continue with the heating system. I'm happy to be done with the insulation. I've done the ceiling, I've done the walls, and now that looks pretty good. It looks a bit bluish, but it's not in reality. And now it's time for the heating panels. And I'm having here far infrared. And far infrared, actually, it's the same as what we would call a black radiator. In other words, it's the same effect as you are on the top of a mountain, standing in the snow, and the sun is out, and you look at the sun, and you feel the sun on your face. You feel how warm it is. Well, this is the same effect. These radiators, or black radiators, they don't heat up the air. There's no convection at all, but they heat up the surfaces and the objects in the area. And that's what makes them very suitable for a paint boot because I don't want to have air movement around and convection because that is always going to cause dust no matter what you do. So um, how many panels do you need for your paint boot? That's a good question always. Well I've gone for four panels and for a total of about 2800 watts which is more than enough for the paint boot that I have which is about 35 cubic meters. Now I oversized them, I went to the double so uh, if you need panels you can find it on the websites where they're selling these panels and they will tell you how many watts you need per cubic uh, meter. It all depends a bit on your insulation and so on. So you can always dimension them the way you want. Now these panels are very safe and that's what you need to have in a paint boot because you don't want to have an explosion in your paint boot. They are very safe, they are insulated all around, they are very thin as well as you can see and there is no open flames or any sparking area possible so that makes them extremely suitable for a paint boot. So I'm just measuring uh, the locations for the fixation screws of the um, infrared panels and I'm using a laser for that but you don't need to use that, I mean you can just do it with whatever you have. This is always a little bit tricky. Um, 
to get it on, but um, it should be working. Okay. <coughs> this is the back side of the far infrared panel heater, and as you can see, it is sealed all around. So the actual heating elements uh, or the crystals are behind this panel and it's all sealed up so there is no risk whatsoever uh, for explosions uh, in the paint boot. I'm having the heating panels installed all around the paint boot and now the last thing to do is to feed the electrical cables through the wall. Therefore I'm going to drill a hole underneath the heater and then feed the cable through it and on the outside I will connect all these cables together on a junction box and a thermostat so I can actually control the temperature. So we're going to drill a hole through the wall so that we can actually feed the cable to the other side. Now before I finally push it in all the way, I'm going to give it a little bit of silicon inside. So it's going to drag it along and that's how I can properly seal it up. So now we're going to install the light. And before I install the light, I want to have a little talk about light. Because light is the most important part in a spray boot, besides the heating, of course, and the dust-free environment. But light basically comes in three main characteristics. It's the amount of light, it's the type of light, and it's the light temperature. Now, quickly talk about those, because it's important when you are going to choose your light sources. First of all, the type of light. Uh, you have hard light and you have soft light. Now, hard light is the light whereby you have very strong contours in the shadows. So it's throwing very hard shadows. Soft light doesn't throw shadows uh, as hard or as refined or defined as what hard light does. So a car, it has rims and edges and all kinds of things. And if you have hard light, those edges and rims are going to throw a shadow onto the object. And you don't want to have shadows, or at least a minimum amount of shadows when you are painting. Now, let me give you a little demonstration with this pen here uh, on how we're going to demonstrate hard and soft light. Right now, we have fairly soft light. And on my right, you have two light sources. Uh, this is one light source. It's not that big in surface, but big enough. And this is the second light source is out there, which is a small little hole that I cut in a similar panel like that one, showing a small light source. Now, Hard light is the result of a small light source, so a small surface. This is a big surface, that's a small surface. And hard light is the result of a very small surface of the light source. And let me show you what that does. So bear with me. Right now I have the big light source. You know, the light that I had on my right? That's what now illuminates this pen. And you can see how it throws the shadows. All the way at the beginning of the pen, the foot of the pen does some hard shadows, but once you look further, the shadows kind of disappear and the light wraps around the object. Now, if the light source was even bigger, the shadow would totally disappear. So the bigger the light source, the softer the light. This is what we call soft light. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you use a light source, which is very small in surface. So now I turned on the small light source and look what happened with the shadow how sharp that is and defined, that's the result of a small light source. Now this is what we call hard light. This is not what you want to get in your paint boot. You want to have soft light. So we talked about soft and hard light, so now it's quite obvious that you want to have in your spray boot soft light. Now professional paint boots will have big panels, huge panels, big light sources that are producing soft light. Now it doesn't matter how much light the source is producing, how much what it is. If the surface is small, you're going to get hard light. The second aspect uh, of light is the amount of light, and that's the power of the bulb or the tube or whatever you have. Now, the amount of light is expressed in lumen, and in the paint boot, you have to have a sufficient lumen. Now, I'm going for five times 3,600 lumen. So that's near to 20,000 lumen. This is near to about roughly 1,500 watts of normal um, bulb light, and that should be more than enough. And I'm going to be using this kind of TL-looking uh, 
light sources because it's a big surface so I'm going to create reasonable soft light it's not going to be 100% soft light secondly it's sitting in an enclosure which is sealed and that's important in a paint booth so that top goes on there and it seals it all off now light temperature is all about how we see colors really and the sunlight is 5300 degrees Kelvin and that's the ideal light temperature that we should have now unfortunately these light bulbs that are producing daylight are quite expensive and especially since I have gone not for what you would expect standard TL lights if I can get it out but I have gone for believe it or not LED lights and this is an LED tube now LEDs with daylight simulation are very expensive because you need a color rendering index of at least 92 95 so that's the ability to reproduce the right color so that's way too expensive so I've gone for some mediocre LED lights uh, they produce 4000 degrees Kelvin light which is near to daylight um, but that's what it is and I'm quite happy with that one so in my paint boot I will not be able to verify colors I have to take it outside it's a bit like in a store if you go to a store and you look at some colors of clothing or painting or whatever inside it looks quite often and outside well this is going to be a bit the same but then again for my color correctness I will do this outside under proper daylight and not in the boot in the boot I'm just gonna spray all right so um and as a last point if you're going to buy light sources or fixtures then make sure they are explosion free so you don't get an explosion inside your paint boot just putting the clips up and we should be good with this one So folks, we are nearing the end of part number four. We have put the insulation up, we sealed off the cabin, we fixed the doors, we put up heating elements, and we put up the lights. And as you can tell, it looks pretty bright. I think the light is quite nice. I would say this is fairly soft light. That's what I wanted to get. So I'm gonna seal up the floor now and just let it dry, nothing special to that so that I can wipe the floor afterwards with water. Each time I'm gonna do some painting. And that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And in part number four, which will be the last part, I will install the fan uh, for the exhaust and the fan for the intake, and we'll install actually the filters inside these holes. I really hope you enjoyed it, and please uh, keep feeding me back with information because I really like to hear what you have to say about this. So far, I think it's been quite a bit of work but I'm very happy and pleased with it because it looks quite good and I think this will be a great paint boot yes it's not professional but it will just do the job for me thanks for viewing and I'll see you in my next videos bye bye